Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. We bring you another beautiful night here at Phil Welch Stadium. Myself, Red Tracy, bringing you the call tonight as we get set for some more Mink League action as the St. Joe Mustangs take on the Joplin Outlaws. Tonight we have a special starting pitcher, it seems like, with a uh, Make-A-Wish kid named Patrick Gwynn. He'll be throwing out the first pitch of the ball game tonight to a Outlaws player, the second baseman, Ryan Lazo. Coming in after him is right fielder Ryan Scrogans. Uh, batting third, the left fielder, Zach Stewart. Batting fourth, the designated hitter, Enrique Fanal. Batting fifth, the third baseman, Matt Turner. Batting sixth, the catcher, Jake Jackson Moore. Take a timeout here as Patrick throws the first pitch of the ball game and strike one on Lazo. Gets the ball tasked back to him and he just hangs out in the middle field, lays down with it. Just a beautiful moment here at Phil Welch. As he throws another one, strike two. See if he can get another one and strike out the first hitter of the game. <laughs> Uh, every time the ball comes back to him, he just lays down in the middle of the field. Here comes the south ball. Steer right three. There we go. As Patrick Gwynn strikes out the first batter of the game for the Mustangs. They toss the ball around the horn. We hear train horns going. As that, I believe, is his wish from what I've seen. He wants to ride a train. And the Mustangs have brought him out here to, you know, take partake in all the game day activities. Uh, you know, throwing out the the first pitch. He signed a contract for the Mustangs, got his own uniform, and participated in some pregame activities. And as he exits the field, I know they were trying to raise some money, so we'll see if the Mustangs are able to provide that wish for him and get him a train ride. As we hear some more train horns. <laughs> it's a great moment here at Phil Wells for a great organization. As we head back to the starting lineup for the Joplin Outlaws, come betting seventh for them. Excuse me, betting sixth and playing shortstop Jam Doucette. Betting seventh and playing first base John Boydonis. Betting eighth and playing center field Ty White. Or excuse me, batting ninth. Apologize. And the starting pitcher for the Joplin Outlaws is Zach McKnight tonight. Around the horn for the Mustangs, starting with the outfield from left to right is Mike Sherburn. And we have Ryan Abernathy in center field. And just as always, Zach Johnson starting in right field. And on the left side of the infield tonight, Josh Cassidy at third and Brandon Husky at shortstop. On the right side of the infield, uh, excuse me, Eric Will Coxon at second base and Joe Corper at first. Behind the plate tonight for the Mustangs, Francisco Alvarez, the I guess, second pitcher of the night. As, uh, Patrick Gwynn was the starting pitcher for the Mustangs tonight as Brandon Baker. Mustangs sit at four and three in league play so far this year and eight and three on the season. As Joplin coming out of the South Division for the Mink League sits at four and two in league play this year. As Ryan Lazo comes up to the plate, Mustangs played Joplin last Friday night and ended up winning that one. Mustangs pitcher tonight, Brandon Baker, has started one game, ended up taking the loss in that one as he started on Sunday down in Nevada and against the Griffins, ended up allowing four runs, I believe, and uh, two strikeouts with two walks in that six innings he pitched on Sunday evening. I guess there's something going on down in the field as... Lazo's waiting to step into the box. Pitch 
couple of Mustang players jogging around. That's me. <laughs> As they return to the dugout, Lazo steps in the box and ready for the, I guess, first batter of the game after Lazo struck out to Patrick Wynn, the Make-A-Wish uh, Make child. Baker deals strike one on the inside corner. He's to an 0-1 count now. Baker now set to deliver and strike two on the outside. So after a rough outing on Sunday, it gets this one started fairly quickly with two strikes in a row. Let's see delivers and a foul ball by Lazo back behind the stadium here. Baker delivers and just low there for ball number one. Brings it to a one and two count now. As the lefty Baker is having a fairly strong start with this first batter. That deals another one high. Brings it to an even count at two and two. As Lazo fouls another one off, back over the stands here. As Baker looks, takes a long look in there for the sign from Alvarez, and a swing and a miss by Lazo. As Baker sets him down for the first out in this ball game. And brings up the right fielder Ryan Scroggins to the plate. It's Baker delivers a swing and a miss by Scroggins. Puts an 0 1 count now. Baker now set to deliver and high for ball number one. Oh, Baker delivers a swing and a miss by Scroggins to a one and two count. For Baker, Let's see. Played this past season for the Missouri Tigers, native of Lithonia, Georgia. Stands in at six foot even and made one appearance for the Tigers, so not much work for him during the college season. Only pitched a third of an inning, but that third was a strikeout. So a brief appearance for him for the Tigers, but a good appearance as he dealt low there for ball number two. Scroggins fouls one back into the netting, keeps the count even at two and two now. As Baker now deals from the windup. Scroggins watches one go by just above the chest for ball number three, bringing it to a full count now. The fans are still filing in here in the 7 o'clock start as Scroggins flies one high into center field. Abernathy settles under it and makes the grab for out number two. Here in the top half of the first, bringing up the left fielder Zach Stewart to the plate. Baker took a little longer on that last batter, but still two quick outs here. So he sets down the first two batters. Hey. Good start to his second start of the season. As Stewart steps in and Baker now delivers. And a towering fly ball into shallow right center field. Looks like all three right fielder 
center fielder and the second baseman converged on it, but Zach Johnson, the right fielder, comes in to make the grab. So Baker sets him down in order here in the top half of the first, and we'll see what the Mustangs can do in the bottom half of the first as we come back on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back with you here as we head into the bottom half of the first inning. The Outlaws not able to do anything in the top half. We have the starting second baseman for the Mustangs, Eric Wilcoxon, coming to the plate, followed by center fielder Ryan Abernathy. Batting third is left fielder Mike Sherburn. And batting cleanup is the first baseman Joe Corper. Batting fifth is the designated hitter Andrew Standifer. Batting sixth is the right fielder Zach Johnson. Batting 7th is the shortstop Brandon Husky. Batting 8th is the third baseman Josh Cassidy. And batting ninth is the catcher Francisco Alvarez. So Will Coxon comes up to the plate now. And the starting pitcher for the Outlaws, we said, is Zach McKnight. It's now set to deliver here the first pitch of the Outlaws ballgame. Deals it in there for strike number one in the inside corner. Will Coxon's gotten a chance to start in five games so far this year, but kind of struggling on the season as he's gone just three for 18. Watch his ball number one outside. Is it to a one and one count now? This McKnight deals low for ball number two. There's ball number three on the outside corner. Moves it to a favorable hitter's count for three and one now. Will Coxon still looking for that fourth hit of the season. Watches strike number one go by. So McKnight now deals and Will Coxon grounds one foul down the first baseline. Keeps the count at full with three and two. So Will Coxon grounds one to the second baseman. Lazo on the play makes a sliding stop. Throws it on over to the boy Donis, excuse me, over at first base for the first out in the inning. Brings up the center fielder Ryan Abernathy to the plate. See if he can get things going for the Mustangs here. He's had a very hot start to the season, batting 481 and seven games started so far this year. McKnight now set to deliver and way inside there for ball number one. And Matthew fouls one off back to the fence here. Oh 
Knight delivers for inside there. Ball number two. Brings it to a two and one count now. Knight delivers inside for ball number three is another three and one count for him. Knight now delivers a ground ball over the shortstop to set, and he botches the play. The ball gets past him, and Abernathy is safe at first on an error by Doucette. That is definitely not someone you want to put on the base pads on an easy play like that. And that brings up the left fielder, Mike Sherburn, to the plate. As I'm sure Abernathy on first base will be looking to steal here, as he usually does. Taking a nice lead off of first as McKnight looks in for the sign. And a foul ball by Sherburn down the third base line. Takes it to an 0-1 count. Sherburn in Thursday's game had a big triple into right field to drive in Abernathy, who got on base ahead of him for the first run and the tying run in the Mustangs game against the uh, excuse me against the Clarinda A's. So he's sure he's looking to do the same thing here as he sits on a one and one count now. Abernathy with a big lead off of first. And Sherburn watches ball number two go by just outside. As Sherburn looks at ball number three, this is now the third batter of the inning and the third batter that McKnight has gone down three to one in the count on. Got the first one out and Abernathy ended up first after an error by Doucette, so let's see what Sherburn can do here. So he hits a high fly ball and ends up going foul. It's down the left field line. Brings the count to full now at three and two. Sherburn steps back into the box, and I'm sure Abernathy will be taking off with the pitch here. As he does, and outside, low and away for ball number four. Puts two runners on base now for the big man, first baseman Joe Corper. Corper just 8 for 30 on the season, but does have three RBIs on those eight hits. And I'm sure that a single with the speed of Ryan Abernathy would definitely score him and give the Mustangs an early lead here in this ballgame. Corper steps into the box, and McKnight looks in for the sign. He deals just hitting the inside corner for strike number one. Bringing it to an 0 and 1 count. So McKnight sets to deliver and a ground ball down the third baseline. Not foul. I believe it stayed on the line and Corper gets thrown out at first by the third baseman Turner. Well, that advances the runner. So now second and third with two outs here in the first inning, bringing up the deep designated hitter, Andrew Standifer, to the plate. Kind of a half swing by Corper on that last one that ended up having the ball trickle down the third base line. It looked like it was going foul, but Turner, the outlaw's third base, may be able to pick it up in time and gun it over to Boydonis over at first for the out. 
As we now have Abernathy on third, Sherburn on second, and Standifer at the plate watching ball number one sail by. As McKnight now delivers, and Standifer watches it fall in for strike number one on a good breaking ball by McKnight. That evens the count at ones now here with two away in the bottom half of the first. As the ball gets away from the catcher more, and Abernathy comes in to score from third, Sherber and over to second. As they pitch low and in, the, excuse me, over to third, and the pitch low and in the dirt by McKnight gets away from Moore as that puts the score now at one to nothing as Abernathy comes rushing home to score that one. And Sherburn, seeing what was happening, advanced to third base. And that puts a two and one count now on Standifer. So he watches strike number two to even the count now at twos. McKnight now sets and delivers, and a swing and a miss by Stanifer. Moore drops it, but throws it on over to Bordonis at first for the final out in the inning. But the Mustang is able to get one on a pass ball by Mc, or by Moore, so they lead one to nothing as we head into the top half of the second here at Bill Welch Stadium. We'll be back with you on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back here at Phil Welch Stadium for the top half of the second as the Mustangs score one in the first inning on zero hits as Abernathy reached on an error and after a walk and a pass ball ended up scoring for the Mustangs and to the plate now comes the designated hitter for the Outlaws, Enrique Finale. So he watches ball number one on the outside corner. A towering fly ball into left, shallow left center field. But the left fielder Sherburn able to come in and make the grab, calling off Abernathy for the first out in the inning. And that brings up the third baseman, Matt Turner, to the plate. It's a shot over to first baseman Joe Corper. He's able to make the grab in a quick one pitch, two outs now. That's uh, two away now here in the bar, top half of the second. Bringing up the catcher Jackson Moore to the plate. Baker was able to have a 1-2-3 inning in the first innings. He looks to do the same here, setting the first two down. As he delivers strike one to more. Baker dealing high for ball number one. 
Brings the count to even now, one and one. There's more fouls, one back to the netting here. Brings to a one and two count now. More steps out of the box. Now back in. We're back ready for action. Here now delivers and strike three on the inside corner as he sets them down in order again. As we head to the bottom half of the second inning, the Mustangs still with that one to nothing lead. And we'll see what they can do back on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back here in the bottom half of the second inning as the Mustangs look to increase their one to nothing lead, sending up the right fielder Zach Johnson to the plate. Mustangs scored one in the bottom half of the first inning after Abernathy reached on an error. Sherburn walked. Corper advanced him on a ground out, and then a pass ball ended up scoring Abernathy. Knight now delivers, and Johnson looks to bunt as he misses on that one for strike number one. Zach Johnson has started every game for the Mustangs so far this year. He's gone 9 for 34 for a 265 average, but has driven in seven runs so far as he grounds one right back up the middle just past the pitcher McKnight. And Doucette, the shortstop, able to get to it, but bobbles it, and Johnson is safe at first on a hard-hit ground ball back up the middle. I'm guessing that's going to be the Mustangs' first hit of the game. We can see what the official scorer does, but that also brings up the shortstop, Brandon Husky, to the plate. It does look like they gave him a hit on that one as... I would agree as it was a very hard hit ground ball and a tough play for Doucette to try and make after it nicked the pitcher's uh, glove. As Husky watches ball one high there. McKnight checks on Johnson at first, but able to he's able to get back in time. McKnight now set to deliver here. And outside, bring it to a 2 0 count. Johnson does have a little bit of speed on the base pass. He does have three stolen bases on the year so far. See if he can add to that total. Is McKnight now set to deliver here, but checks on him at first base. He's able to get back in time. 
I guess they know about the stolen bases as well. As that's the second time they've checked on him over at first base. McKnight delivers low for ball number three. That brings it to a 3-0 and count now on Husky. He watches it. Another one go by for ball number four. That is a runner that will put him on first base with Johnson standing on second base after that walk. And the third baseman, Josh Cassidy, coming to the plate. Cassidy, not the usual starting third baseman for the Mustangs so far this year, but that may change after today. So he is starting tonight because Nate Winfrey, the typical suspect at that uh, position, ended up getting drafted by the Cleveland Indians earlier today. So congratulations to him. We'll see if – I don't know if he's signed already, so he can, can't play tonight or if he will be in tonight maybe as a final appearance for the Mustangs. As I believe he is expected to sign sometime soon. Cassidy watched ball one go by. He looks to bunt and pulls it back, but still in there for a strike. Bringing it to a one and no count, or excuse me, one and one count now. Cassie has got the chance to play in five games so far this year. As he's gone for, excuse me, a uh, 273 average and bunts one down the first baseline. The second baseman Lazo able to get to it. Tosses it on over to first base, and out goes Cassidy, but the bunt does what it is intended to do as they weren't able to get the lead runners, so that puts runners on second and third now with one away here for the Mustangs. And brings up the catcher, Francisco Alvarez, to the plate. McKnight now set to deliver here. Alvarez checks his swing, but ends up going around, as the umpire says, for strike number one. As he does a little check swing, it goes over to the second baseman, Lazo. He's able to toss it on over to first, but... That just the second out of the inning, so Johnson was able to come in and score on that little RBI ground ball out for Alvarez, and we head back to the top of the order for the Mustangs with Eric Wilcoxon coming to the plate. The Mustangs now with a two to one lead, or excuse me, two to nothing lead. Will Cox an 0 for 1 on the night as he grounded out to the second baseman Lazo in the first inning. McKnight delivers ball number 1 in the dirt there. Brandon Husky was able to advance on that little ground ball that Alvarez had. So we have the third run of the Mustangs standing 90 feet away. As Wilcoxon looks at strike number one to even the count at one and one now. As Wilcoxon flies one into left field, and the left fielder barely has to move and reels it in as Stewart makes the final out in the inning there, but the Mustangs still able to plate one in the second inning as well, bringing it to a 2 to nothing lead now. We'll head into the top half of the third and see what the Outlaws can do as we'll be back on the Mustangs TV network.
And we're back here in the top half of the third as the Mustangs able to plate one in each of the first two innings for a two to nothing lead. Outlaws went down one, two, three in the first, one, two, three in the second. We look to see more of the same as we have the shortstop jam, Doucette, coming to the plate. Baker deals strike number one. Baker with a strong start so far in this one as he has two strikeouts in those first six outs. As he deals low for ball number one to even it at ones now. Baker deals inside there for ball number two. And high for ball number three as we go to a three and one count now. This is something that seems to be new to Baker as he's working from down in the count. And deals inside for ball number four, the first base runner of the game for the Outlaws. Comes in the top half of the third here with that walk and brings up the first baseman John Boydonis to the plate. Baker deals a beautiful little breaking piece for strike number one. Baker now set to deliver an inside for ball number one to bring it to a one and one count now. Baker checks on the runner at first, but not a great attempt as he comes in standing up, doesn't have to dive back or anything. He's a flying drive into center field, falls in there for a hit. Just a single on this one as Abernathy gets to it quickly and tosses it back in, but that puts runners on first and second now for the Outlaws. We go to the Ninth batter in their lineup, the center fielder Ty White. Baker now set to deliver here. He deals outside for ball number one. White looked like he was going to lay down on a bunt there, so we'll see if he does more of the same here. He does lay down a bunt down the third base line, but it goes foul. Bring it to a one and one count now. White showing the bunt now. Corper moving in from first base. As he lays down the bunt, Alvarez is able to hop on it, throw it onto first with Wilcox in covering, and he was out at first on a good play by the catcher. Alvarez is able to hop out of there and nab the speedy White as he was heading down to first. But that puts runners on second and third now, just one away here in the inning. As we head back to the top of the lineup for the Outlaws with the second baseman Ryan Lazo coming to the plate. Lazo struck out swinging back in the first. As Baker deals low in the dirt there for ball number one, but Alvarez is able to drop down and block it, making sure that that runner on third doesn't come home to score. Lazo steps back into the box, and Baker looking in for the sign now. Alvarez sets up outside. Baker ends up dealing inside there, bringing it to a 2 0 count. It's Corp. 
Harper is playing on the infield grass here almost at first base. As he watches ball number three go by there. Bring it to a 3-0 and count. Both the corners playing in, so a quick ground ball that we'll be able to throw home here. Try and prevent that first run of the game for the Outlaws from scoring. As Baker delivers strike one to bring it to a 3-1 and one count. Middle of the infield playing at normal depth, it seems. Baker deals, and a ground ball to Cassidy at third. Able to make the scoop on a dive, on a sliding stop. Throw on over to Corper at first for the second out in the inning as they send Lazo back to the dugout. And on that play, the uh, runners stayed there on second and third as Cassidy was able to keep that one from going out of the infield on a sliding stop and able to get Lazo over at first. We'll head to the second batter in the lineup, the right fielder Ryan Scroggins. Baker deals outside for ball number one. As I said, the runners still stand at second and third for the Outlaws. Cassie with a great play to prevent a run from scoring. Here in the top half of the third. Baker was set, but didn't like something he saw and stepped off the mound. Delivers now low for ball number two. To a 2 0 count now on Scroggins. As he was the second out of the first inning, he flew out to the center fielder Abernathy on a very high fly ball hit. As he watches strike number one on the inside corner. Baker now set to deal. There's ball number three. Just a bit inside. Bring it to a three and one count. The pitcher looks to prevent the first run for the Outlaws from scoring. Work himself out of a little jam here he's in. There's a high fly ball down the right field line. Corper going over, but it falls on the concrete just outside the fence. So not able to make the grab, and the count moves to full at 3-2 and two now. Baker now ready to deliver again. And they grab all over to Wilcox in a second. He's able to scoop it up, makes the throw over to first, Pulls Corper off the bag, but Corper able to jump up and make the tag on Scroggins just in front of the bag for the final out of the inning. As the Outlaws had runners on second and third, but the next three batters went down in order, so no runs scored. Mustangs still have their 2 to nothing lead. So we head into the bottom half of the third, and we'll see what they can do back on the Mustangs TV network. We're back here at Phil Welch Stadium as we head to the bottom half of the third. Mustangs still hanging on to their 2 to nothing lead. They send up the center fielder Ryan Abernathy to the plate. He's able to score the Mustangs first run of the game after he reached on an error by the shortstop Doucette in the first inning. Ended up getting moved over to second on a walk and third on a ground ball out by Corper and scored on a pass ball 
for the first run of the game. As he hits a towering shot in the left field on the first pitch of this at bat. Stewart able to settle under it, make the grab for the first out here in the bottom half of the third. And that brings up the Mustangs left fielder, Mike Sherburn, to the plate. Sherburn is 0 for 0 on the night as he walked in the first inning. McKnight delivers, just hitting the outside corner on a nice little breaking ball for strike number one. Throws another one in there for strike two, bringing it to an 0 and 2 count now. The swing and a miss by Sherbert on a drop third strike and more able to throw on over to Boydonis at first to secure that one for the second out here in the inning. And bringing up the first baseman, Joe Corper, to the plate. We have time called just before the pitch is delivered. Corper, the man who grounded out to the third baseman, Turner, back in the first inning, but able to advance the runners. And put Abernathy in key position to score on that pass ball. As he watches strike number one go by. McKnight delivers and a swing and a miss by Corper for strike number two. Brings it to an 0 2 count now here with two away. Let's see, checks his swing. The appeal to the first base umpire. He says he did not go around. So there's ball number one. It's Corporal now back in the box and. McKnight back on the rubber to deliver this pitch. Teals a breaking ball in there for... Well, I guess it didn't go around on that one either. So there's ball number two. Evens it at twos now. The swing and a miss by Corper for strike number three. McKnight sets the Mustangs down in order here in the bottom half of the third. We'll head to the top half of the fourth inning, see what the Outlaws can do as the Mustangs still hang on to their 2 to nothing lead. We'll be right back on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back here in the top half of the fourth inning as the Mustangs hang on to their 2 to nothing lead. Brandon Baker still on the hill for the Mustangs. They'll be facing left fielder Zach Stewart. Stewart 0 for 1 on the ninth. He had a high fly ball to right field, but Johnson was able to make the play on that one. Lays down a 
button here, but pops it foul for strike number one. Baker now set to deliver. Low and in the dirt for ball number one. To a one and one count now. Baker deals strike number two. Nice little breaking piece over the plate. So he looks to get his third strike out of the game. There's a high fly ball. Oh, stays in just barely, and Alvarez able to settle under it and make the catch. Thought it was going to be into the netting there, but it gets blown back in a little bit, I guess. And Alvarez able to make the grab on that one for the first out here in the fourth inning. And that brings up the designated hitter for the Outlaws, Enrique Fanal, to the plate. He also flew out to Zach Johnson in the second inning. He fouls one off there for strike number one. Baker looks in for the side. Alvarez set up on the outside. Throws a little... Curveball, but just misses for ball number one here to Fanal. Brings it to a one and one count now with one away. Baker delivers in there for strike number two. Pulls ahead in this count one and two now. A foul ball above the stands here, Phil Welch. Keeps the count at one and two for Fanal. Baker delivers and a fastball, but just high on that one. Brings it to an even count now at two and two. Deals on a swing and a miss by Fanal for strike number three. And he's second out here in the fourth inning. A good little breaking ball by Baker on that one to get the strike out. And that brings up the third baseman, Matt Turner, to the plate. Turner hit a little soft line drive over to Corper at first in the second inning. Corper was able to handle that and make the Second out in that inning. So he watches strike number one go by. Baker now delivers and outside for ball number one. So he delivers low and inside for ball number two. Brings it to a two and one count now with two away. Mustang still holding on to that two to nothing lead. Baker delivers ball three there. It's like a curve ball that just missed. Quite a few fans here at the stadium tonight. Or a beautiful Saturday night ball game is. Stewart, or excuse me, Turner fouls one back into the fence, bring it to a full count now. Had quite a bit of rain this morning here, but that was able to clear up by about noon, and the sky is cleared, and we have a high fly ball in the center field. Abernathy settles under it, able to make the grab for the final out in the inning. Good. Outlaws go down one, two, three here in the top half of the fourth. Mustangs still have their two to nothing lead. We'll see what they can do back on the Mustangs TV network.
And we're back here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Mustang still hanging on to a two to nothing lead as they send designated hitter Andrew Standifer to the plate. McKnight still on the hill for the Outlaws, and it is Star Wars night at Phil Welch here as we had a few of the Star Wars characters answering some Star Wars trivia. Pretty much a swing and a miss by Standifer. For strike number one, Standifer 0 for 1 on the night as he struck out swinging to end the first inning. And another swing and a miss for strike number two. Watch his low there for ball number one. To a one and two count now. A swing and a miss by Standifer for strike number three. He gets sent back to the dugout with his second strikeout of the night as that brings up the right fielder Zach Johnson to the plate. Johnson scored the second run of the ball game for the Mustangs in the second inning after he reached base with a nice single into right field. The hard hit ground ball to do set the shortstop and able to throw on over to Boydonis at first for the second out here. As Johnson grounds out to do set. Brings up the shortstop for the Mustangs, Brandon Husky, to the plate. Husky is 0 for 0 on the night as he walked in the second inning. He watches ball number one go by just outside. Husky having a tough time getting going on the season. He's played in eight games, just batting 174. As he grounds one over to the second baseman, Lazo. Scoops it up, throws over to Boydonis at first for the final out here in the inning. Mustang set down quickly in order. One, two, three, and we'll head to the top half of the fist as they hang on to a two to nothing lead. We'll see what the Outlaws can do back on the Mustangs TV network. As we head to the top of the fifth inning here at Phil Welch Stadium, the Mustangs hanging on to a two to nothing lead. The Outlaws send up catcher Jackson Moore to the plate. Lefty Brandon Baker still on the hill for the Mustangs. He's gone four strong innings so far. The only hiccup he's really had is in the third inning when he had a walk and a single for the first two batters. We watch ball number one go low. I was saying that third inning he had a walk to the first batter, second batter singled, but the next three batters went down one, two, three as the sec first, second, and fourth inning he set the batters down one, two, three as well. He have a towering fly ball in the right field. Johnson settling under it. He makes the grab for the first out here in the fifth inning. And that brings up the shortstop jam to set to the plate.
There's a check swing by Doucette and say he goes around for strike number one. Puts him at an 0 one count now as Baker delivers. Hits the outside corner for strike number two. Let's see if Baker can't get his fourth strike out of the game, but Doucette grounds one right back up the middle. Wilcoxon with a diving play, but not able to come up with it as the ball slides just under his glove and into center field, and that puts Doucette on with a single. And brings up the first baseman, John Boydonis, to the plate. Baker now set to deliver with Doucette taking a good lead off of first. And then Boydonis thought that Baker was taking a little bit too long when he calls time, steps out of the box. Adjust the gloves and get right back in. As Baker deals inside there for strike number one. Boydonis is one for one on the nines. He has a hit back in the third inning. He fouls one off for strike number two. Apparently his bat went flying on that one. Had to step out of the box and grab it. Sits on an 0-2 count now. Baker looks to deliver. A swing and a miss by Voidonis. Sets him down on strikes, and that was Baker's fourth strike out of this game. Brings up the center fielder Ty White to the plate. Doucette still stands on first with two away here in the top half of the fifth. So we have White stepping into the box, who is 0 for 1 on the night. Grounded out to first base back in the third inning. A swing and a miss by White for strike number one. Baker now sets a deliver here. He deals outside there for ball number one. Kind of a tight strike zone here as White stands what looks to be about five foot seven, five foot eight, and he also squats down. So it's a really tight strike zone for Baker to hit, and let's see if he can do it here. So ground ball over to Wilcox in a second, and throws over to Corfer at first for the final out in the inning. They set down White on a nice ground ball play there by Wilcoxon. We'll head back to for the bottom half of the fifth inning. Mustangs still having a two to nothing lead. We'll be right back on the Mustangs TV network.
And we're back here at the bottom half of the fifth inning. Mustangs still hold on to their 2 to nothing lead as they send third baseman Josh Cassidy to the plate. Cassidy 0 for 1 on the night as he grounded out back to the pitcher in the second inning. And as I said, Cassidy not the usual starting baseman for the Mustangs, but Winfrey was drafted by the Cleveland Indians today along with a couple other Mustangs that were drafted as well. Cassidy swing and a miss there for strike number one. Mustangs also had Griff Gordon drafted by the New York Yankees, I believe, in the 26th or 27th round. It's a foul tip there. Brings it to an 0-2 count now on Cassidy. He's uh, played for the Mustangs last season and has not showed up yet this year as his college season has kind of made a deep run to the playoffs, I believe, but We'll see if he signs with the Yankees and goes there, if he comes here. Also, an old Mustangs player, Bo Ballas, I believe is the name, it was also drafted. And a swing and a miss by Cassidy for strike number three. Sets him down on three straight pitches, says McKnight, and that brings up the catcher, Francisco Alvarez, to the plate. So a couple current Mustangs and a former Mustang got drafted today, and we'll see where that leaves this team. Good, good publicity, hopefully, for the Mustangs. Maybe draw in some more recruits next year, which is always a good thing. Is McKnight with a nice breaking ball in there for strike number one. Alvarez is 0 for 1 in the night as he grounded out to the second baseman, Lazo, in the second inning, but ended up being a ground ball that drove in a run and Zach Johnson comes and came in to score. So McKnight dealt in the dirt there for ball number one. To a one and one count now. As the pitch just misses on the inside there for ball number two. He's to a two and one count now on Alvarez. The swing and a miss by Alvarez evens the count at twos now. Alvarez with a fairly good start to the season. He's played in four games, batting 286 so far this year. But watches strike number three go by on a big breaking ball by McKnight. He sets down the first two with strikeouts here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Go back to the top of the lineup with Eric Wilcox and coming to the plate. Wilcox stands at 0 for 2 on the nine as he had a hard ground ball to Lazo at second base in the first inning. Flew out to the left fielder Stewart in the second inning. So he looks to bunt and pulls it back for ball number one. See, I guess the umpire said he was not back in time because that was actually strike number one. McKnight now set to deliver here. Deals outside, bringing the count to one and one now. Here with two away. Knight kneels ball number two in the inside corner. Will Coxon, kind of your typical second baseman, kind of small in stature, but got the speed to play the position. It's always something I like to see. He only stands at five foot ten. Watches ball number three go by. Brings it to a three and one count now. He hits a line drive into the right center field. Right fielder goes over and makes a shoestring catch, I believe. Yep, and he did catch that one for out number three in the inning. And a good play by the right fielder Scroggins on that one. Make a shoestring catch, as I said, for the final out in the inning. We'll head to the top half of the six. Mustangs still hang on to their 2 nothing lead. And we'll be right back with you on the Mustangs TV Network.
And we're back here at Phil Welch Stadium for the top of the sixth inning now as the Mustangs still hold on to their 2 to nothing lead. The Outlaws head back to the top of the lineup with the second baseman Ryan Lazo coming to the plate. As his walk-up song is the Death March. It's Star Wars night here at Phil, Mar Phil Welch. Still waiting for the Mustang Stampede, the drum line, to get off the field before we can get this inning underway. Baker still on the hill for the Mustang, gone five strong innings here. A good start, but deals ball number one just outside there as Lazo was looking to butt, but Pell pulled it back. Lazo is 0 for 2 on the night. So he hits one foul down the left field line and onto the concrete pad. It brings the count to one and one on Lazo. As he looks to bunt, but pops it up behind the plate and onto the netting here. First strike number two. Lazo struck out swinging in the first inning and grounded out to the third baseman Cassidy in the third inning. That good play by Cassidy was able to slide in front of it and make the stop to prevent a run from scoring. Keep the score at two to nothing for the Mustangs. As Baker deals high for ball number two, evens the count at two and two now. Lazo fouls another one off all the way up to the roof here. Keeps the count at two and two. Baker now delivers a ground ball over to Cassidy at third base and tries to make a scoop on the play but not able to get it as it hits the heel of his glove and bounces over to shortstop. That puts Lazo safe at first on that play. As they do rule that one an error, I believe. The first error of the Mustangs game. Bringing up the right fielder Chris Scroggins to the plate. Baker now delivers, and they ground ball over to Wilcox in a second, but it hits off the field umpire. I believe that in that instance they call it a, a dead ball, and the runners awarded each base. That's how it looks like it's going to stay. What could have been a double play on a hard hit ground ball for the Mustangs ends up putting runners on first and second now as it bounced off the field umpire. Kind of a tough break for the Mustangs. That brings up the left fielder Zach Stewart to the plate. He looks to bunt and it goes down the first base line but rolls foul for strike number one. Stewart jogs back to the plate. Stewart is 0 for 2 on the night as he flew out to Zach Johnson, the right fielder, in first inning. As he watches ball number one go by just low there. He also had a towering fly ball that ended up behind home plate, and Alvarez was able to settle under it and make the catch. Back in the fourth inning, he lays down a bunt, corporate charges on the play, throws over to Wilcox and covering first, able to get Stewart out at first, but advances the runners to second and third now with just one away here in the sixth inning. And brings up the designated hitter Enrique Fanal to the plate. His manager Matt Johnson comes out to the mound to visit with Brandon Baker, and I believe that usually signifies a pitching change that we'll have here. As guessing Baker's day is done. 
So we'll wait and see who they're going to bring in here. With just one away in the sixth inning. I don't, I don't see anybody warming up. Right, I guess Baker will stay in this game as Matt Johnson decided to go out and talk to himself instead of sending pitching coach Kyle Jackson to the plate. Or excuse me, to the mound. And Baker stays in this game as he deals and the ground ball right back up the middle. Wilcox and grabs it, throws over to corporate first for the second out in the inning, but the runner at third base, Ryan Lazo, was able to come in and score on the ground ball. Bringing it to a two to one game for the Mustangs now with Scroggins standing on third base. And the third baseman Matt Turner coming to the plate. Turner looks to lay down a bunt. Seems to be kind of surprising to everybody with two outs here. As the infielders were playing at normal depth. Now they take a couple steps in as with the throw again. They ground ball over to Wilcox in at second base. He bobbles it a little bit, but able to pick it up, throw over to corporate first for the final out in the inning. But the outlaws plate one here in the top half of the sixth, so Mustangs. Lose a little bit of the lead. It stands at 2-1 to one for the Mustangs now. We'll head to the bottom half of the sixth inning on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back here at Phil Wolf Stadium for the bottom half of the sixth inning. Mustangs still hold on to a 2-1 to -one lead after getting a tough break in the top of the sixth. As the, what could have been a double play ended up hitting the field umpire and put two runners on, and that runner on second base ended up coming around to score on a ground ball. That brings up for the Mustangs center fielder Ryan Abernathy as he looks to get something going here. Ends up watching ball one go by there. Adam Matthew for two on the night, but reached on an error in the first inning and ended up coming around to score the first run of the game for the Mustangs. And flew out to left fielder Stewart back in the third inning as he watches ball number two go by. And he grounds one down the third baseline, but foul. That brings the count to two and one now. Abernathy watches ball three go by as it just misses outside for McKnight. That brings it to a three and one count now. There's ball number four on the outside, and there's a walk to Ryan Abernathy to lead off the bottom half of the sixth here. And brings up the left fielder Mike Sherburn to the plate. Thank <laughs> you. 
Mustangs hold on to that two to one lead. So let's see if they try and get something kick started here and send Abernathy to second base. As he does have four on the season so far. I guess McKnight knows that as well as he checks on Abernathy at first base, but he's back in time. Sherber an 0 for 1 on the night as he struck out in the third inning and reached on a walk in the first inning. McKnight definitely worried about Abernathy at first base as again he checks on him. Abernathy scoots on back in time though. Sherber watches a good breaking ball by McKnight go by for strike number one here. McKnight deals low and away there, bringing the count to one and one now. None away here in the bottom of the six. Mustangs trying to get something going as they leave with just one run now. Abernathy takes off for second base and a ground ball through the hole between short and third base. Sherburn hits one for a single and that puts two on and nobody out here in the bottom half of the sixth. And the big man, first baseman, Joe Corper, coming to the plate. As more the catcher goes out and talks to McKnight, try and calm him down. Maybe talk a little strategy in dealing with the power hitter and Joe Corper. With two runners on here. As both the runners take off and a foul ball above the stands here for Corper. Brings it to a 0 and 1 count now as Moore jogs on out to talk to McKnight again before this next pitch. Corper looks down to third base coach and Mustangs manager Matt Johnson to get the sign. Let's see what he does here. See if they call another hit and run. As McKnight delivers and a swing and a miss by Corper. He seemed to be trying to give a nice jolt to the Mustangs offense with a big strike on that one, but just barely misses it to bring the count to 0-2 here. Still none away. Abernathy stands on second with Sherburn on first. Lazo, the second baseman, trying to hold Abernathy close. Corper checks his swing and does not go around, bringing to a one and two count now. McKnight looking in for the sign now as he gets set to deliver here. See what Corper can do. Both the runners take off, and Moore throws down to the third baseman Turner, who's not able to handle the throw. And Abernathy is safe at third, with Sherburn advancing on the play as well. So that puts runners at second and third now for the Mustangs. Still none away, and a 2-2 count here for Corper. As he looks to drive in a couple insurance runs for the Mustangs, they just hold on to a 2-1 lead in front of a big Saturday night crowd here at Phil Welch Stadium. It's McKnight now set to deliver here. They ground ball right back up the middle off the mound. Doucette able to handle it just behind second base, but not able to make a throw in time as Corper is safe at first base on a bad throw that short hopped the first baseman Voidonis on that one. And Corper was able to beat it out as that scored Abernathy on the play and put Sherburn at third. So the Mustangs now have a 3-1 to one lead here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Yeah. 
believe they did end up ruling that one an error, it looks like, on the shortstop do set. Although it was quite a tough play. He was given the error on that one. That puts runners on the corners now with designated hitter Andrew Standifer coming to the plate. But before that, we're going to have a mound visit by the Outlaws manager, Jason Emekis. As Zemeckis exits the field now, McKnight stays in the game. Moore jogs on back to home plate, and we're ready to start the action back up here. So runners on the corners for the Mustangs with Sherburn on third and Corper on first. Abernathy came across the plate to score the Mustangs third run of the game just a minute ago. And standing for Stanford plate as Corper takes off for second. Moore, the catcher, fakes the throw to see if he can get Sherburn to go, but Sherburn knows what he was doing and stays put at third. So that puts runners on second and third now for the Mustangs. A 1-0 count on Stanford and still none away here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. McKnight now set to deliver here. There's a ground ball over to the first baseman boy, Donis. He takes it himself, makes the out at first, but Sherburn comes in to score on the play for the Mustangs' fourth run of this ball game. And Corper was also able to advance on the play as he now stands at third base. And the right fielder, Zach Johnson, comes to the plate. Johnson sits at one for two on the nines. He singled back in the second inning, grounded out to the shortstop due set in the fourth inning. Infield playing very shallow on this one as they look to try and have McKnight induce a ground ball and throw out Corper at home to save a run. As the Mustangs have this four to one lead. And a swing and a miss by Johnson for strike number one. Infield stays in just off the infield grass here. See if Johnson can't maybe hit a little blooper over their heads to score this run. But a swing and a miss for strike number two. Brings it to an 0-2 count now with one away here. Mustang still have that 4-1 to one lead. Their fifth run, Joe Corper, standing just 90 feet away. As we watch strike number three hit the inside corner, Johnson doesn't look happy with it as he shakes his head a little bit, walking back to the dugout, but got to abide by the umpire's call, and that was strike number three for the second out in the ascending. Brings up the shortstop, Brandon Husky, to the plate. Husky sits at 0 for 1 on the night as he grounded out to the second baseman, Lazo, in the fourth inning. He walked in the second, and a swing and a miss by Husky for strike number one. McKnight now set to deliver here to Husky. He looks to drive in Corper standing on third, but watches ball number one outside. To a one and one count now. Two away here in the bottom of the sixth. There's a breaking ball by McKnight that misses for ball number two. So I've said before, Husky kind of struggling on the season, batting just 174. And he's only got four hits, but each of those hits has driven in a run. So hopefully he can go five for five here as he watches ball number three low and in the dirt. Brings it to a three and one count now, two away. 
Husky back in the box, and at night sets to deliver. And low for ball number four as Husky draws his second walk of the day. And that again puts runners on the corners for the Mustangs as the third baseman Josh Cassidy steps up to the plate. Cassidy still searching for his first hit of the night as he sits 0 for 2 with a ground out back to the pitcher and a strikeout so far tonight. But it looks like McKnight's day is done as Emekis, the manager for the Outlaws, heads out to talk to him for the second time this inning. And as we all know, that means the pitcher's day is done. So we'll see who uh, comes in for the Outlaws here when we come back Mustangs still hold on to that four to one lead we'll be right back with the new picture the Mustangs TV network And the Outlaws bring in a new pitcher here in the bottom of the six. McKnight's day is done as he goes five and two-thirds, allows just two hits, but four walks and four runs on the night. He does end up with seven strikeouts, though, as well. And they bring in another right-hander in Grant Hamilton to the mound. As he comes in to face the sort of, excuse me, third baseman, Josh Cassidy. The ball gets away from Moore, the catcher. Both the runners... Advance on the play. Corper comes in to score on a pass ball. And that puts Husky at second with Corper coming in to score the Mustangs' fifth run of this game. On a high fastball, it just got away from the catcher more, and he didn't know where it was and was able to locate it not in time. The Mustangs score another run here in the bottom of the six with Husky now standing on second, and they want to no count on Cassidy. A swing and a miss by Cassidy for strike number one. Still two away here in the bottom of the six. Is Cassidy's 0 for 2 on the night. I believe I said. Mc, or excuse me, Hamilton, the new pitcher, deals. And swing and a miss by Cassidy for strike number two. Brings it to a 1 and 2 count now. As Cassidy looks to avoid his second strikeout of the night. Steps back in the box and Hamilton looks in for the sign. Sets a deliver now. 
deals and a swing and a miss by Cassidy for strike number three. Hamilton faces one batter for one strikeout, but the Mustangs able to score three runs in the bottom of the sixth. That increases their lead now to a five to one lead, and we'll head into the top of the seventh. See what the Outlaws can do on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back here in the top half of the seventh inning as the Mustangs have a 5-1 to one lead now after scoring three in the sixth. The Outlaws sending up the catcher Jackson Moore to the plate. Brandon Baker still on the hill for the Mustangs. He had a strong outing today. He deals low for ball number one. The only trouble Baker's really had on the day was beginning of the third and beginning of the sixth innings. They put both those runners on base, and they fly ball into right center field. Abernathy running over, but Johnson able to call him off and make the play on that one for the first out in the inning. And it brings up the shortstop Sam set to the plate. set sits at one for one on the night as he... Had a single in the fifth inning and walked in the third inning. Baker deals ball one there. Do set one of the few guys to be able to figure out Baker as he's only allowed three hits tonight. Deals strike number one on the outside corner, bringing it to a one and one count now. There's strike number two on a nice fastball. Brings it to a one and two count now. Baker now del delivers and low for ball number two, evening the count now at two and two. Still one away here. And Baker searching for his fourth strike out of the night. He feels low for ball number three to bring it to a full count now. Still one away here, top half of the seven. The swing and a miss. Oh, no, but you got a piece of it. <laughs> uh, do set able to snag just a little piece of that ball as he ended up fouling it off there for... Keeping the count at full now. Baker delivers, and now a swing and a miss, and Alvarez able to snag it off the ground and tag to set out before he was able to get down the line for the second out here in the inning. And it brings up the first baseman, John Boydonis, to the plate. Boydonis sits at one for two on the night as he had a single in the third inning and struck out swinging in the fifth inning. Baker delivers strike number one. Let's 
It's good to see Baker with a strong outing in this one as he struggled a little bit on Sunday. With uh, Ended up going six innings, ended up with a 9 ERA on that one. In a Mustangs loss to Nevada, 7-4. to four. Boy, Don has fouled one back there onto the roof to bring it to an 0-2 count now. Baker's delivers and high and inside for ball number one. Puts it in a one and two count. Baker delivers low in the dirt there, bringing it to an even count now at two and two. A swing and a miss by Boydonis for strike number three. Baker able to strike out two in that inning. Sets him down one, two, three, and we head into the bottom of the seventh. Mustangs still have a five to one lead here. We'll be back on the Mustangs TV Network. And we're back here in the bottom half of the seventh inning with the Mustangs having a 5-1 to one lead. Scored three runs in the bottom half of the sixth inning to increase their lead and send up the catcher Francisco Alvarez to the plate. Alvarez sits it 0 for 2 on the night as he looks to bunt there but fouls it down into the ground for strike number one. Alvarez grounded out to the Second baseman Lazo in the second inning and struck out swinging back in the fifth. Hamilton now delivers and hits the outside corner and a good pitch for strike number two. The big breaking ball misses there for Hamilton. His count moves to one and two now and a very fast-moving game tonight. We're almost through seven innings and still under two hours on the game as Alvarez grounds one to the shortstop to set, flings it over to Boy Donis at first. He is out at first for the first out in this inning. Looked like Boy Donis might have come off the bag a little early, but umpire says he's out, and we head to the top of the lineup for the Mustangs with Eric Wilcoxon coming to the plate. Will Coxon stands at 0 for 3 on the night as he grounded out and a couple fly outs for him. Looks to see if we can't start something for the Mustangs and maybe score a few more runs in this game. Although with the way the bullpen has looked in the later innings so far this year, I don't think the four-run lead is going to be able to come into question. It's a foul ball by Will Coxon brings it to an 0 and 2 count now. Hamilton delivers here on the 0-2 count, way high above his head for ball number one. 
pitch to a one and two count now. He also delivers way outside of the evening in the count now at two and two. Start off with a couple strikes quickly here. And Wilcox is able to work the count back to even now. And a high fly ball stays just foul. The Turner able to settle under it down the third baseline and make the catch for the second out in the inning here. As we head to the second man to line up for the Mustangs, the center fielder Ryan Abernathy. Abernathy is 0 for 2 on the night, but he reached on an error in the first, ended up scoring the first Mustangs run of the game, and walked in the sixth inning, and ended up scoring the third run of the game for the Mustangs. So he may be 0 for 2, but has two runs on the night. As Hamilton delivers a nice breaking ball there for strike number one. Hamilton now sets to deliver on the 0 1 count. Another breaking ball just misses inside for ball number one. Brings it to a 1 0 count now. A swing and a miss there by Abernathy brings it to a one and two count with two away here. As Hamilton deals just outside there, brings it to an even count at two and two. And Hamilton way inside on that one as it hits Abernathy in the left elbow, it seemed like. And he jogs on down to first base with two away here, bringing up the left fielder Mike Sherburn to the plate. This is Abernathy's second walk of the night as he also walked in the last inning, the sixth inning. And Sherburn stands at one for two on the night. He had a walk in the first and... Strike out in the third and ended up with a single last inning. Zabernathy takes off for second, but Sherburn fouls one off here for strike number one. Abernathy goes back to first. Sherburn looks down the third baseline to see what Matt Johnson's going to call here, see if he puts on another hit and run. That seems to be what happened on the last pitch. Hamilton now set to deliver. Abernathy stays at first, but Sherburn is swinging away and ends up fouling one behind the stands here. Brings it to an 0 2 count now. Abernathy taking a big lead off of first, it seems like, even for him. Hamilton notices he checks on him there. Abernathy was able to get back in time and still with that big old lead at first as Sherburn sits on an 0-2 count and Hamilton looks to deliver here. He throws low and outside there for ball number one. Brings a count to one and two now, two away. Abernathy on first, the Mustangs with a five to one lead in the bottom of the seventh here. Abernathy takes off and a foul ball by Sherburn. So that keeps the count at one and two. Abernathy jogs on back to first and we'll get set to do it all over again. Sherburn back in the box. And we see some Star Wars characters with some lightsabers walking around on Star Wars night at Phil Welch Stadium. Abernathy taking off again and inside for ball number two, but Moore throws down to Lazo covering second base, and Abernathy somehow is out, even though he's got a nice set of wheels on him. But Sherburn 
not able to get a full at bat in. So we'll see him in the bottom half of the eighth inning as Abernathy was thrown out for the final out here in the seventh inning. Mustangs still have a 5-1 to one lead. We'll be back at the top of the eighth on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back in the top of the eighth inning. Mustangs still have that 5-1 to one lead. As the center fielder for the Outlaws, Ty White, comes up to the plate. Mustangs starting pitcher, Brandon Baker, still on the hill here in the eighth inning. He looks set to deliver now to White. Deals high and inside. A little chin music there for ball number one. White sets it 0 for 2 on the night. He grounded out to the second baseman Wilcoxon back in the fifth inning. So he watches strike number one go by. And also had a bunt that Alvarez was able to handle and threw him out at first in the second inning. Baker now set to deliver and inside for ball number two brings us to a two and one count now. Baker delivers and a foul ball back into the nets here covering the grandstands at Phil Well. Evens the count now at two and two. Baker delivers and inside to bring it to a full count now. Baker delivers and another foul ball by White back to the net. Keeps the count at full. Baker has gone seven strong innings tonight. He has eight strikeouts on the night and one run. Only a couple base hits here. So he takes a step off the mound. Wasn't liking what he was seeing Alvarez put down and wanted to reset the count here. Now back on the mound. Oh, apparently wasn't really liking it as he takes a couple steps forward and Alvarez goes out to talk to him now. Maybe a little mix-up going on there. As they chit-chat for a little bit and then Alvarez heads right back to home plate. So hopefully we can have things figured out between those two as Baker looks to continue a strong outing. White still sits at a full count here. And fouls another one off, a third in a row back behind the stands. Baker now set to deliver here. Okay. White just keeps staying alive and fouls off another one here to keep the count at full.
White stepping back in the box now as the pitcher Baker delivers. And a little ground ball right back up the middle. Will Coxon charging on the play. Not able to get to it in time as it was a very softly hit ground ball and White is safe at first to put the first runner on in this inning. I believe that's going to be a base hit, an infield single for White as that was a softly hit ground ball just past Baker off coming off the mound and Wilcox is not able to charge quick enough. And I believe Baker's day is done. As I said, goes seven strong innings and a good outing for him here. And we'll be see who the new pitcher is for the Mustangs when we come back on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back here in the top of the eighth inning as Brandon Baker's day is done. He goes seven innings pitch with only one earned run, six strikeouts, and one walk on the night. And a very strong outing by him as in relief comes in number 29 for the Mustangs, Grant Gavin. Be facing the leadoff hitter for the Outlaws, Ryan Lazo, as White still stands on first after a single, or an infield single he just had. As Lazo watches ball number one go by. Alvarez checks down there. A little snap throw, but White able to get back in time. As Gavin deals strike number one to Lazo. Gavin's appeared in three games so far this year, and he's got one win out of it, and Eight strikeouts on the years with no walks. So a good start to his season so far as he looks to continue that here. If they swing and a miss by Lazo for strike number two. Gavin now set to deliver here. So he deals on this one and two count. Way inside, backing up Lazo and brings it to an even count now at two and two. 
Lazo sits at 0 for 3 on the night as he's struck out, grounded out to Cassidy, the third baseman, and reached on an error. And he actually is the one who scored the lone run for the Outlaws here tonight as Gavin checks on White at first. Gavin now delivers, and they hit right back to him. He throws it over to Husky Cover in second. He throws it over to first. Not in time, but Mustang still able to get the lead runner on a hard ground ball right back to Gavin. He's able to think quickly and throw out White at second base. But Husky's throw not on time on the tail end of a double play, so Lazo is safe at first on that fielder's choice. And the right fielder, Chris Scrockins, coming to the plate. Scroggin sits at one for three on the night as he singled in the sixth inning. And watch his strike number one go by. A good fastball by Gavin. Gavin now set to deliver here, but. Looks over at Lazo standing on first and delivers. A swing and a miss by, excuse me, Scroggins. Puts it at an 0 and 2 count now. Gavin now looks in and is set to deliver here. He deals just inside for ball number one. Brings it to a one and two count now. Alvarez checks down to first with a little snap throw again, but Lazo was back in time. Gavin now set to deliver to Scroggins. And a swing and a miss by Scroggins for strike number three. Alvarez checks down to first, but Lazo back in time. That might have been a hit and run as Lazo almost got caught stranded a little too far off there. But he was back in time as that brings up the left fielder, Zach Stewart, to the plate. Stewart sits 0 for 3 on the night as he's still looking for his first hit. Gavin checks on Lazo over there at first, but Lazo slides back in in time. Gavin now set to deliver the first pitch of this at bat, and a fly ball down the right field line, tailing just foul as I think it went over the fence there into the little picnic area down the right field line at Phil Welch. Lazo, the runner on first, taking a while to get back to first base there. After that long fly ball. Now back in position is Gavin set to deliver here on the 0-1 count. Gets it in there for strike number two on a check swing by Stewart. Brings to an 0-2 count now with two away here. Stewart takes a look down at the third base coach for the Outlaws and See what he should do here. As Lazo takes off from first, and Stewart with a line drive into right field. Johnson comes up with it, comes up throwing to corporate first, but he was not able to get him in time. As we have seen that happen a couple times so far this year, but not this time. As Stewart was safe at first base. On that single in the right field, which puts Lazo on second, brings up the designated hitter Enrique Fanal to the plate. Johnson seems to do it every time where he just comes in charging hard on a shallow line drive. It'll fall in there what should fall in there for a hit, but he's thrown out the runner at first base a couple times this year and missed it by maybe a half a step on that one as 
Stewart was able to reach first base. Gavin now delivers low for ball number one, bringing it to a one and a no count. Finale is sitting at 0 for 3 on the night. Has one of each, it seems like. So he has a fly out, a strike out, and a ground out. And Gavin delivers just low for ball number two. Still two away here on the top half of the eighth. Mustangs have that 5-1 to one lead. As they look to get their fifth win in league play and stay atop the North Division in the Mink League. As Gavin deals ball number three, bring it to a 3-0 and o count now. And a bit of a sticky situation here as he has runners on first and second with you know, two out rally looking like it might start is he might throw in another ball to load the bases. But not right now, says Gavin, as he throws strike number one on the inside corner. Cam now delivers in a high, towering fly ball to right field. Johnson able to settle under it and makes the catch for the final out in the inning. Mustangs got into a little bit of trouble with a couple runners on, but able to work out of it and had a fly ball to right field there for the final out. And We head into the bottom half of the eighth inning as the Mustangs have a 5-1 to one lead, and we'll be right back to see what they can do on the Mustangs TV network. And we're back here at the bottom of the eighth inning. Mustangs still have that 5-1 to one lead as they send up left fielder Mike Sherburn to the plate. There's strike number one on the outside corner. Grant Hamilton's day is done for the Outlaws. They bring in lefty Gibson Russ for what is hopefully their final inning as pitching. 
as they won't have to in the bottom of the ninth because Mustangs will take home a winner tonight. There was strike number two from Russ. Brings it to an 0-2 count now on Sherburn. Sherburn sits it one for two on the night, but now one for three as there was strike three on the outside corner. And Sherburn is set down looking for the first out in the inning. Brings up the first baseman, Joe Corper, to the plate. Corper sits at 0 for 3 on the night, but actually reached on an error in the sixth inning and ended up coming around to score the fifth run of the Mustangs ball game. The fouls one off for strike number one. Official attendance for tonight, I believe I heard, was 3,451. So a great Saturday night crowd here at Phil Welch as Corper fouls one back, stays inside the fence, but nobody able to get to it. And that's strike number two on the at-bat. Now I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast. We had a bunch of rain this morning, but fortunately the tarp was on the field. The clouds cleared and the sun came out for tonight's game. Ended up being beautiful weather, and I'm sure any one of the over 3,000 people here can attest to it. It's been a great ball game tonight. As the Mustangs look to take home a winner, there's a swing and a miss by Corper. Guess they're saying he actually got a piece of that one. Guess it just tipped off. Ended up hitting the catcher who runs out to talk to Russ. Count still at 0 2 with one away here. Moore takes a bit of a long mound visit with Russ. I don't know if he's trying to shake off that foul ball that Corper hit back into him or just settle Russ down. Russ now delivers and hits the outside corner for strike number three on Corper. As that is two up, two down for us. Both struck out looking. Brings up the Mustangs designated hitter, Andrew Standifer, to the plate. Standifer sits at 0 for 3 on the night. He struck out swinging in the first and fourth innings and grounded out to the first baseman, Boyd on the or in the sixth inning. Watch his strike number one hit the inside corner on a nice fastball by Russ. Russ a southpaw, so it's a favorable matchup for Standifer as he hits from the right side of the plate. Though Russ does kind of have that whipping motion on his arm, so it might make the ball a little bit harder to see here in the lights. As he deals just inside for ball number one, bring it to a one and one count now. Russ deals a big breaking ball, but ended up missing high and outside for ball number two, bringing it to a two and one count now with two away here in the bottom half of the eighth. As Russ now set to deliver, a swing and a miss by Standifer. Brings it to a two and two count now. A high fly ball stays on the infield. The third baseman Turner settles under it, makes the catch for the final out in the inning here. As the Mustangs go three up, three down in the bottom half, they still hold on to that 5-1 to one lead. We'll head into the top of the ninth and see if the Mustangs can close it out and get the victory here. We'll be back with you on the Mustangs TV Network.
And we're back here in the top half of the ninth inning. The Mustangs have a 5-1 to one lead here. Grant Gavin's day is done on the hill for the Mustangs as he goes throwing just that one inning, the eighth inning. He faced five batters, gave up two hits, had a strikeout, and worked out of some troubles. There was a couple runners on there. And they bring in the right-hander John Pomato to pitch for him. Pomato has appeared in three games for the Mustangs, pitching uh, an inning in each of those games, has four strikeouts, one walk on the season, has not allowed a run yet. Let's see if he's able to come in and close out the victory for the Mustangs and move them to 5-3 and three in league play. Keep them atop the North Division. Let's see he faces the third baseman, Matt Turner. Deals in a high for ball number one. Motto looks in for the sign now. He's set to deliver low and away there for ball number two. Brings it to a 2 and 0 count. On Turner. Turner sits it 0 for 3 on the night. So he has a couple flyouts and grounded out to Wilcox in at second base. Watches strike number one go by on a nice fastball by Pomato. Brings it to a two and one count now. Deals in high there. Bring it to a three and one count now. As Pomato looks to avoid starting off this inning with a walk. But ends up doing so as he throws low one away there for ball number four. Puts the leadoff runner on here in the top half of the ninth and brings up the catcher Jackson Moore to the plate. Moore also sits at 0 for 3 on the night as he also has a couple flyouts to the right fielder Zach Johnson and struck out looking back in the second inning. Pomato delivers ball number one on the outside there. This is actually the last time Joplin will come to town this season as we played them last Friday here at home and again tonight. And this is the last game of a five-game homestand for the Mustangs. It's Pomato deals strike number one. So saying this is the last time we'll see Joplin for the season here, and maybe the last time ever as it came out earlier this year that they have an independent league baseball team moving to town is going to play in their stadium. So they need to find somewhere else to play the beginning of next season. Let's see what happens with them. Is Kamado now set to deliver? A swing and a miss. For strike number two, one more. Mono set to deliver on this one two count here and deals outside for ball number two, ends up going in the dirt, but Alvarez is able to drop down, keep it in front of him, and keep, uh, excuse me, Turner on first base. Puts the count even at two and two now. As Alvarez snaps over to first base and not in time as Turner's back there. That was a high for ball number three there, bringing it to a full count now on the batter Moore. These fans love watching a good baseball game, but they also love a good fireworks display, which we'll have tonight. 
as Moore watches strike number three hit the outside corner, and he sits down looking for the first out here in the top half of the ninth and brings up the shortstop Sam Doucette to the plate. I was saying it is fireworks night here at Phil Welch as we have every single Saturday. Always a good display. Also do Saturday Night Jukebox, which tonight is Cinematic Hits. Probably in honor of Star Wars night, so we'll be hearing some good music to famous movie classics as the fireworks go off tonight. Motto checks on Turner at first base, and he's back in time as he's now set to deliver here. Hits the inside corner for strike number one on Doucette. Doucette sits at one for two on the night. So he singled in the fifth inning and struck out in the seventh inning. Right hander now set to deliver. The deal's just low for ball number one. Bring it to a one and one count now. Here with one away in the top half of the ninth. Mono steps off the mound as he doesn't like what Alvarez is putting down. But now steps back on, set to deliver, and a foul ball by Doucette back behind the scenes here. Puts it at a one and two count now. Mono now delivers and hits him on the elbow as it seemed like Doucette kind of leaned into that one, which you never want to see. Kind of taking one on the elbow there, and that puts runners on first and second now. And brings up the first baseman, John Boydonis, to the plate. So I was saying, though, a lot of hitters. You usually see him back away, but Doucette seemed to kind of lean into that one with his elbow, so taking one for the team, I guess, and didn't think you were really allowed to do that, but umpire didn't say anything, awarded him the base, and we have runners on first and second out with one away here. This boy Donis stands in there and watches ball one high, and Alvarez doesn't like what Pomato's doing so far as he's put the, per put the first two runners or first two out of three runners on, excuse me. Here in the inning, and has a little mound visit with him. Alvarez now back down behind the plate. Pomato back on the mound. We're ready to get things rolling again. Pomato delivers one a nice fastball in there for strike number one. We're going to do a one and one count now. One away here in the top of the ninth. The Mustangs still have that five to one lead. Pomato now set to deliver. Hits the outside corner for strike number two. A beautiful pitch by Pomado to get that second strike. Gets ahead in the count, brings it to a one and two count now. Mono now comes set, delivers the pitch, and a nice little breaking ball over to third base. Cassidy not able to grab it, goes into left field, excuse me. The runner coming over from second base, Turner stays at third base, so that puts the bases loaded now. Just one away here in the top of the ninth on that boy Donna single. Just snuck by Cassidy, who came charging from the right side there Char charging in on his left just flew under his gov went into the left field fortunately Sherburn was charging on the play it will pick it up and not let that runner from third come in as that brings the center fielder Ty White to the plate it's a high fly ball into the left center field 
Sherburn settles under it, makes the grab, but the runner Turner tags up from third, comes across the plate to score. Fortunately, the Mustangs have a few insurance runs here as that one hopefully won't matter. And we head back to the top of the lineup with Ryan Lazo coming to the plate. Lazo sits at 0 for 4 on the night. And he's reached base a couple times, once on an error and once on a fielder's choice. He scored the first run of the ball games for the Outlaws back in the sixth inning. Motto delivers high for ball number one. Motto looks in now and comes set. Ready to deliver. Still runners on first and second. Hits the outside corner for strike number one. Brings it to a one and one count now. Lazo hops back in the box and Pomato comes set to deliver now. Is a ground ball over to Husky at shortstop. Comes up thrown over to Corporate first. Not in time as Lazo is safe at first base and that puts the bases loaded yet again. Here in the top of the ninth, brings up Chris Scroggins, the Outlaws right fielder, to the plate. Scroggins sits at one for four on the night with a single back in the sixth inning. Two away here in the top of the ninth. Base is loaded. Mustangs with that five to two lead. As Pomato deals outside for ball number one. Pomato in his fourth appearance for the Mustangs this season. First time he's really struggling on the mound, but deals strike number one. Bring it to a one and one count now. Motto's really been able to come in and shut anything down that the opposing team has been doing, but not tonight as he's let the bases get loaded twice, but we watch strike number two hit the outside corner, brings it to a one and two count. The Mustangs now one strike away from taking home the victory here at the stadium tonight. As the drum line is rolling right now, Motto set to deliver. Outside for ball number two on a little breaking ball. Evens the count at two and two now. Motto looking into Alvarez for the sign. Come down the stretch. Base is loaded situation here. Deals it. Hits the inside corner. Strike number three. And that's a Mustangs winner, ladies and gentlemen. They take home the... 5-2 victory, move him to 5-3 and three in league play, 9-3 and three on the season. We'll wait for our Eagle Radio player of the game, which I'm going to guess is the starting pitcher, Brandon Baker, for tonight, who went seven strong innings, so six strikeouts, allowed just one run and one walk on the night. We will keep the camera rolling for fireworks after the Eagle Radio player of the game is announced. So if you want to stay tuned and watch fireworks, you're more than welcome to.
There's your Eagle Radio player of the game, Brandon Baker. The Mustangs take home the win tonight with five runs and just two hits and one error. And the, beating the Outlaws that had two runs on seven hits and two errors. The fireworks are about ready to start, and we hope you join us on Wednesday evening back at Phil Welch Stadium as the Mustangs will be back in action. And if you can't, we hope you join us on YouTube and watch the broadcast live. Be back up here or... I will actually not be here, but Chucky Kemp will be here. Fireworks are about to start, so we'll let those roll, and everyone have a good night.
Thank you. 
Thank you. 